All right, this is an audio check just to make sure everybody can hear me nice and clearly. All right, everybody, in just another minute or two, we're going to get going. All right, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come check out our Locked In Learning series. We thought we'd put together some useful information for you guys to dive into Unilogic and, and uh, get going with these projects that you might have a little bit more time than usual to work on. So this is the first in a series of videos that we are going to be doing. So today, we're gonna talk about the hardware and software introduction of Unilogic. Next week, we'll cover the latter HMI and memory. The following week, data logging. And lastly, communications. The Unilogic portion of these uh, videos will be taking place on Tuesdays, like today. Visilogic, on the other hand, will take place on Thursdays. So this Thursday, we will be doing hardware and software introduction for Visilogic and covering the same topics for Visilogic each week as Unilogic. So quick overview of Unitronics, if you're unfamiliar with us. We were established in 1989. We have over a million installations worldwide. We serve just about any industry that has a need. Uh, we can automate truly anything. And we have over 160 distributors in about 50 countries. So just a quick overview of some of the industries that we cover. Power and energy, food and beverage, pumps, water and wastewater treatment, pharmaceutical, packaging, building automation, refrigeration, 
And now we're even uh, emerging into the cannabis market as well. So if you want to check out our website, unitronics-cannabis.com, feel free to do that. So a quick look back on the history of Unitronics. We started back in 18, 1989. In 2000, we moved to the M90 series. 2005, we moved up to the Jazz. 2006 to the Vision. And in 2017, or 2013, excuse me, we launched the Unistream line. And that's what we will be covering today. So the Unistream line gives you one integrated solution for your control and automation. This product line will allow you to bring in just about any combination of IO you need. It's gonna give you a quality HMI interface for your operator to work with. And we are very proven. Again, we have over a million installations. The Unistream line now also supports a full range of VFDs. So we are now in the motion space as well. We also support servos. So both servos and VFDs are now options with the Unistream line. You can see with the Unistream line that we bring that we are a total solution for the industry 4.0. So we bring all of the protocols that your devices around the factory uh, or your location will talk, and we can bring in all that information to the Unistream and provide that in whatever format the operator needs. And we will even do customized solutions. So if you have a very big project potential that doesn't quite fit one of our existing offerings, reach out to us, let us know the details and we might be able to get something going for you. So we're really bridging the gap between IT and OT. So we're bridging the gap between information and what the machines are talking. So we're not only talking to the machines, but we're controlling and monitoring the data from those machines. So we're really bringing these two worlds together. MQTT and SQL are the two major uh, protocols in this space that allow us to do this. So a quick product review. So our four lines are the Unistream line, the Vision line, the Samba line and the Jazz line. And that is from higher complexity to lower complexity. So Unistream is gonna be the best product for your most complicated projects. The Unistream series comes in a few different flavors. We have the modular Unistream series, which comes in three sizes, seven inch, 10 inch, and 15.6 inch. These controllers will utilize a CPU on the back with customizable IO configuration. So you put together the IO that you need for your project. We also have five inch and seven inch built-in models. These have a slightly reduced footprint in your cabinet, a little bit less back, uh, back pane space and has the IO built in. So you would get a pre-packaged set of IO. So here you can see the modular series. All it takes is three steps to spec out your system. You pick the screen size you want, seven, 10.4 or 15.6 inch. You pick one CPU and then you pick the IO that you want. The size of screen that you work with determines how many IO modules you can stick on the back. So for example, with the seven inch, you could stick three modules. If you move up to the 10 or the 15, you'll be able to expand more right on the backspace there. You can see in that diagram, we have a 15 inch with five IO modules in the back. And it's not just IO that you can add to the back. You can also add additional communication modules. This allows you to talk to devices that we may not out of the box share a physical port with, but you can add that and then we can talk with those devices. 
Now the built-in is a little bit different. As you can see on the back there, the back plane has a very different interface. The IO is built right on, but you can still expand out. So if the built-in combination of IO didn't meet the project perfectly, you can use the IO expansion port to add on additional IO. This is the same with modular. It's just a different expansion style but both of these series are expandable out to 2,048 IO points. Now the newest member of the Unistream PLC line is the Unistream PLC. We have been known for being an all-in-one solution, meaning that the panel, the IO, the software, everything was all in one package. Now, we are still that, and we are still doing something pretty unique in this space. This is just the PLC. So as you can see, there's no physical display on this, which might make you think the operator doesn't have an interface to work with, when in fact they do. You can create virtual HMI screens. So when you're making your project for this PLC, you will create screens as though you had a physical screen to work with, just like you were designing it on any other of our Unistream PLCs. And when the operator connects to this using a VNC app, such as uh, through their smartphone or their PC, they will see that virtual screen on their device. This really cuts down the cost of moving up to the Unistream PLC. So if there were any projects that at one point were a little out of reach uh, with Unistream, but you did want some of the features of Unistream, it might be worth reevaluating those and taking a look at this product. So you can see here, that little diagram, laptops, smartphones, and other panels. Uh, you could also use one of the other panels in your factory to connect and show that screen temporarily. So if you already had a Unistream PLC in the, uh, in the environment or on the network, you could you know, just establish a connection to this PLC and show the screen on there as well. And these PLCs are just as robust as the modular or built-in. Uh, we can expand this out up to 2,000 I.O. points, shares the same protocols. So there isn't anything that you can do with a modular or built-in PLC that you would not be able to do with one of these. Also to note, these do come in three flavors the Pro Series, Standard Series, and Basic Series. There is a chart on the website if you go to the Products and then PLC and scroll down to the bottom. You can see a chart of the exact differences between those models. It's just what features are available. We also came out with five inch and seven inch light displays for these PLCs. These are display only. So uh, these will work nicely and give you a professional and consistent look uh, if you have other Unistream panels in the environment. So you can see over here, the five inch and seven inch Unistream displays can be used to connect to that virtual PLC or you could use the 10.4 or 15.6 inch panels, uh, the full panels, if you already have those. So another recent addition to the Unistream line is remote ethernet IO. So this ethernet IO enables easy network expansion inside of your uh, environment. So sometimes it can be a hassle uh, if the point where you need IO is distant from the panel itself. Um, previous solutions was running uh, expansion adapters and things of that nature to get over there or talking over some protocol to a third party device. Now we have our own uh, ethernet adapter 
So this ethernet adapter can be added to your projects and connected anywhere that you have a network connection inside of your office, inside your location. Um, so you could, this could be on the other side of the factory, any ethernet port nearby, plug it into this adapter, and that main panel is going to be able to see this and collect those IO points. And this is compatible with uh, all of the Unistream controllers. And there are two ethernet ports as well, so you can daisy chain these. So you would only need one access point to your network, and then you could potentially daisy chain a number of these together if you needed uh, you know, multiple adapters and up to 63 IO modules per adapter. And of course, the Unistream programming software itself, Unilogic, that's what we're gonna be diving into here in just one moment. This really is an all-in-one software. Um, there is nothing that you're gonna have to do outside of this, regardless of what you're working with. You could be working with VFDs, you could be working with servos, uh, with third-party devices. Everything is gonna be configured in the software, our screens, our ladder, everything's gonna be in one project file. Um, so there's no saving multiple versions and sending multiple versions and making sure everybody has the right file. Uh, it's one file and it has everything in it that you need. So full range of VFDs, complete range of PLCs and HMIs, one software environment to get everything set up. And then you've got me and you can reach out to us anytime you need help. You reach out to support, we're more than happy to help you. You give us a call, you shoot us an email, support at unitronics.com. We're more than happy to help out. All right, so let's dive right into Unilogic. So as you can see, this is what the base view of Unilogic looks like. Now I already have a project open, so let's start from the beginning. If we go to the project menu in the upper left, this project menu is a part of the ribbon. So this part at the top of the software, we refer to as the ribbon. The ribbon is dynamic, meaning that it will update depending on where you are in the software. So the ribbon is going to give you options and tools relative to what you are working with in the software. So to start a new project, you would go to project and then new. It would ask you if you want to say where we are at, and then it is going to prompt us to provide a new file name. Um, I might cut out there a little bit. All right, so in this case, I already have a project going, so no need to create a new one. But once we gave it a name and hit next, it would bring up this view. So as I mentioned, the ribbon up here is going to be dynamic and it's going to update according to where we're at in the program. Now on the left over here is our solution explorer. And this is going to be how we navigate the features of the project. Depending on what feature we are in, we are going to have a toolbox over here on the right that is going to be filled with all the tools that we have to work with. And then down here, we have our properties window. So when we select different things in the software, we will see the property window in the lower right update. And then finally, the last major section of the software are the mem is the memory down here at the bottom. And this is separated across these tabs 
as well as some system feedback, such as compilation errors. So again, just to recap real quick, the five major areas of the software are the ribbon, the solution explorer, the toolbox, the properties window, and the memory. Depending on what you select, that will populate this main display, and this is what we'll be working with. So if we take a quick look under our Solution Explorer, the name of our solution, and then our project. And if we go to the hardware configuration, we can select our controller model. So in this case, we have a 15.6 inch Unistream selected. I could change the current model. And you can see my options here, the modular built-in and PLC. In this case, I have a modular 15 inch panel. And you can see what ports are built in right here as a brief little description. We can also add our I.O. here. So with a modular series, the I.O. is up to you. It's what I.O. you pick. And you can see that when I pick the uh, I.O. here, our toolbox has now updated to be relevant to this I.O. selection. So our toolbox automatically now gives us the different IO options, including expansion adapters and communication cards. So just as a quick example, let's say that I wanted to add eight digital inputs and eight digital outputs. I can either drag and drop this right onto the CPU, or I can simply double click this, and it is going to add that to my project. And just like the toolbox updated when we came to I.O., now that I have an I.O. module selected, we can see that the properties window has updated to give me properties that are associated with this I.O. module. So you can see that everything is used in a uh, dynamic way. We try to reuse space as best we can. And this I.O is also now available in our I.O. So in our memory at the bottom, if we go to our I.O. tab, and you can see this I.O. in the type column, and we can click on that. And you can see now that I am getting status from the I.O., the eight input states for the I.O., which I can give different names for quick reference in the program if I'd like outputs, as well as some additional information. Here we would add the adapter as well, the Ethernet adapter if we were using that. If you had some old Vision I.O. you were using, you can utilize the EXRC1 from the Vision line. And if we were to get into motion, this is where we would be setting up our motion as well. So we would be adding our servos or our VFDs and giving those axes and uh, profiles. Now, this is going to be a critical first step when you're working with your PLC. So when you get a new PLC out of the box and you want to start working with it, as we said, the first thing you do is you pick the right controller model. Now, the next critical thing is to make sure that you have a physical connection to the panel. Now, if you're working with Unistream, I highly recommend working over Ethernet. It is a faster and more reliable um, physical uh, medium to, to connect to the device with. Um, so very simply, you can see here, if I select my panel Ethernet, which is used to talk to the panel, Right now, I have that set to be 192.168.0.126. And now just to show you, because I think it's good to know when you're trying to connect to your panel, you can find your IP address by opening a command prompt on your computer and typing IP config, all one word. And you can see here that my computer's address is 
and then 15. So in this case, I want my PLC to be on this network. So I'm going to make it 192.168.0. And then I made sure no other device was using 126. So I gave our device 126. And now in this ribbon across the top here, if I go to PLC and then PLC communications, you can see that when I target this IP address, which is set on the PLC, I get a green check mark indicating that we are talking. Just a quick uh, demo of that for when you're trying to connect to your panel for the first time. Now under physical here, you see the other physical settings that we have, uh, the CPU ethernet. This is used for uh, ethernet IP as well as some other uh, communication. Panel USB. So if you are using the USB port, for example, for a uh, barcode scanner instead of for communication or something like that, this is where we get those properties. Now, this is all the physical side of communication. This is how the physical connections and physical ports that are being used. Now, the protocols are going to be what we speak over those physical lines. So these are the languages that we're talking. And you can see here that we support quite a few. And you can configure them all here. We will be diving much more in depth on these during the communication section in the next few weeks. So once we've got our controller model selected and our IO defined, the next two major sections of the software are the ladder. This is what is going to be driving the project. So if we go to ladder, it's organized into modules. These are purely organizational and do not affect the flow of the program. Functions are the code that is going to be run. And if you're unfamiliar with ladder, you can think about the code being processed like you would read a book. It is processed left to right, top to bottom. So you can see these numbered nets here. And as we add our elements and build our ladder, this is going to be processed in a scan starting at the top, processing through, coming back to the top and running again. And that is happening very, very fast. Now, HMI, the human machine interface, these are the screens that we're going to be working with. So you can see in this case, I just gave this slide a background for this presentation. Just to show you how I did that, if you select your screen, and you'll see the properties window here, if I have the screen selected, is related to that screen. And in the background down here, I selected an image and I linked this as my background image. So it's very simple to get your own backgrounds there. Now, of course, you will be building these screens out using things from the toolbox. And again, we will be diving into these deeper when we actually start getting into programming in future videos. Just know that you have a wide range of tools here and you can always search for them. Like if you're putting a number on screen, there's a numeric box. Now it's also possible to make custom controls. A custom control is a reusable portion of a screen. So if you had, for example, an on off button with some image that toggled states when you turned it on and off and you were going to use that in you know, hundreds of places around the project, you could make it one time in a custom control. And then when you go to your screen, you have those custom controls available to work with. Another big feature is the web server. This enables a completely separate portal into the controller. So the operator could be looking at the screen, uh, you know, controlling the process and totally different user, remote even, uh, could connect to the web server and see a totally different set of information that you have populated on the web server. Uh, it's very easy to create web pages. Uh, once you enable the web server, you build the web pages just like you would the screens. 
and you can even go to your screens and export them to the web server. Alarms, built-in alarm functionality in the software, and actions. So everything in the everything in the controller is going to be done through actions. So buttons will have actions, uh, as well as project level actions. So you could say when something happens, you want some action to occur. This is what we refer to as a project level action. Data tables. It's like a built-in Excel sheet inside of the controller. You can define this data table with whatever information you want, and it's going to utilize the memory that it needs to. So this can be as large as your memory supports on your controller. All the memory on the controller is dynamic. It is used for whatever you need to use it for. Uh, nothing is pre-allocated. And actually, just to show that real quick, in VisiLogic, the memory was pre-allocated. You had a certain number of bits, a certain number of integers, things like that. Um, you can see here, if that's what you're familiar with, you can actually do a predefined tags project, which means the memory is predefined for you. It gives you a certain number of bits, certain number of integers. I don't recommend that. Uh, you are pigeonholing yourself into using a fixed memory map instead of having full customization. Um, so you'll just create the memory as you need it, whenever you need it. You need a bit, you'll make a new bit. You need an integer, you'll make a new integer. Message Composer is how we would talk to uh, third-party devices or how to understand a message structure that does not fall under one of our existing protocols. All a protocol is is a specific structure to the messaging and both sides agree on it. So if we don't know it already, you can teach the controller the structure of that message. And we support emailing and SMS on the controller as well as SQL, as we mentioned before. We have a whole password management section for uploading, downloading, connecting to the controller. And we even have a whole UAC system, a user access control system. So you can have different levels of operators and admins and give each one of them unique control over only certain parts of the program. Uh, force logins when people try to use a part that they're not allowed to, have things hidden, uh, full user control system built right in there for you. And then we also have formulas and a few other options here. You can see you can manage the SD card. We can create switch cases, support multiple languages on the controller. And anything that you build in this project you can export or you can add that to the library. And that library is a common area available across all of your projects. So if that custom control that we talked about before, the button the, with the light is something that you're gonna use across multiple projects, you, know, you could add that to the library. And then if you start a new project, you can simply import that into the project and you'll have it to work with. And you can see, for example, just an example of the ribbon dynamically updating, I had last selected languages, and you can see up here in the ribbon that we have a language tab with options unique to this language. So the last thing I want to show you here is the, go to the password management section. I have enabled the VNC working mode to have no password. And this is the, the same functionality that you would have with that PLC that does not have the HMI built in. You can still create the screens just like we did here. And you'll be able to go online with them. So if I open up a VNC viewing application and I connect to the IP address of the PLC, 192.168.0.126, .0 .0 
you can see that I have this project downloaded to a 15 inch Unistream here next to me. And the main reason I wanted to connect here was just to round out that initial connection explanation. I just wanna make sure you guys can connect to these controllers if you do have one and that's what you're trying to do. So with the controller powered up, if you press and hold the upper right hand corner, a little pop pop up menu is going to appear. And if we select UniApps, you can see that we have a whole bunch of information about the controller available here. Now, in this case, we are interested in the networking. So if we go to the network and then we go to the IP address, you can see that my IP address is set here. So if you were at home and you were trying to connect to your controller, what you would do is you would open command prompt on your computer, type IP config, find an available IP address. So dot 15 is taken. Uh, so we could do say dot 100 as an example. And through UniApps, you would set this to represent that you would have the dot 100 and you would apply it. And we're gonna lose our connection because I just changed the IP, but you can see now that we are talking on dot 100. So it's as simple as that to match your computer to the device. And once you're matching, you can download and upload and do any of the connections uh, that you need. So thank you very much for attending this quick intro on Unilogic and the Unistream series of controllers. Again, we will be covering much more as the weeks go on. This was a quick introduction but we will be diving into ladder, HMI, and memory next week. The following week, we will explore data logging. And the final week, we will do communications. We will do some examples of communicating with another device. So at this point, I am opening the floor to any questions that anybody has. Please feel free to put them in the questions and I would love to answer them and I'll be hanging out here. So please send all your questions in and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to take a look here. All right, so looking back here, I, I, I missed some questions during the presentation. So uh, when I was mentioning bridging the gap, um, bridging the gap between OT and IT, uh, oversimplifying the explanation a little bit, OT is machine. believe my microphone cut out there, I apologize. Uh, OT is the machines and how the machines are talking and IT is information. Um, so the the values, the, um, the logging of those machine communications. How many adapters can be added? Um, if you were referring to the local expansion adapters, the maximum is five, and it is uh, short range, short range, long range, short range, short range. That is the maximum for the expansion. Um, for the ethernet adapters, um, qu quite a few, uh, 63 IO modules per adapter 
Um, I'd have to double check the exact adapter limitations, but I, I don't believe there's a fixed number, or if it is, it, it is very high. Which devices could use the virtual HMI? So the virtual HMI, um, that is our interface to our PLC that you have created, um, and it is hosted as a VNC server. So we are serving that image of that interface that we've created. So any application that supports VNC clients, any VNC client would be able to connect to the controller and use it. So I'm just making this up, but as an example, if there was some SCADA system or control package um, that had a built-in VNC client portion of it, um, you could configure that for our controller and you could have the controller's view right there inside of you know, another software package if they supported that. Can the Ethernet adapters be connected in a star configuration to an Ethernet switch? The adapters do not care about the network topology as long as it is a valid network topology. Um, they, it is going to work like any standard device on the network. Uh, it's going to take an IP address. So as long as you have the right IP addresses um, sectioned out, uh, everything should talk fine. Explain the differences between Unistream display and Unistream HMI panel for use with the Unistream PLC. Excellent question. So the Unistream display is just that. It is only able to display. Uh, a moment ago, I, I, you know, I mentioned any VNC client is going to be able to connect and view those virtual screens. This Unistream display is just that. It is a VNC client that connects to that PLC, so you can see that virtual display. Now, all of the Unistream line supports VNC client capabilities. So this, this uh, Unistream display is client only. That's all it does. It's a VNC client. Uh, but you can use any Unistream panel that you have, uh, one with a CPU, one without a CPU, um, and you can initiate a connection to the virtual PLC. So uh, Unistream display is just the display. Unistream HMI panel could be its own you know, standalone control system, or it could act as a virtual connection. So if you had two Unitronic systems controlling two different totally separate parts of the system, you could have them uh, connect to each other. So at any point, an operator could see the screens on that other portion of the, uh, of the project. Any thoughts on a low cost Wi-Fi access point? Uh, this way, someone can open the cabinet door and connect with their phone. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I have made this recommendation, especially for places that have higher network security, um, where they are particularly picky about what they let on the network, what they're willing to give it an IP address or how they're segregating the, the different parts of the network. Uh, in those cases, highly advantageous. Just get a cheap little Wi-Fi router. You can get any standard little Wi-Fi router you want. And if you plug that into our ethernet port on the Unistream, that connection has effectively made a local area network for the PLC. So any any PLC, you know, any uh, PC or smartphone that's within range of that Wi-Fi signal is going to be able to connect to that Wi-Fi signal, just like you connect to Wi-Fi at home. And once you're connected to that Wi-Fi router, you are effectively on the same network as the PLC. So you can remotely view it, connect to it, download, upload, do anything like that you need. So yes, uh, 
highly advantageous to throw a little Wi-Fi router uh, inside the cabinet if you need. Um, they wouldn't even have to open up the cabinet door. They could connect anywhere that they're in wireless range of that, that Wi-Fi router. And yes, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar. Uh, it's being recorded, so we will certainly share that. Uh, the Thursday, so uh, same time every every uh, week. So it's gonna be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays will cover Unilogic, and Thursdays are going to be covering Visilogic. How do you program subroutines? That's that's a great question. Um, we're going to be getting into that when we get more into the latter section of it. I uh, just don't want to dive heavy into programming just yet. Yes, all of our software is free. Uh, the software is free. Support is free. Uh, Anything you need from us other than the hardware is pretty much going to be free. Um, so if you have any questions, just reach out to us. Uh, visit our website. The email is support at unitronics.com. The connection between the Unistream PLC and the virtual display is over Wi-Fi. So it is over any valid network path. So Wi-Fi is a valid network path. So if you plugged in a Wi-Fi router, like I mentioned before, uh, you could connect using that. But you could also have an Ethernet cable going right from your laptop to the PLC, and you could open up a VNC uh, you know, client on your PC, and you'd be able to see that screen as well. So any valid network path is going to let is going to enable that. So is there an upgrade path from Visilogic to Unilogic? So the structure of the projects is very different. Um, Visilogic had fixed memory. This has dynamic memory. The features are, are very different in what's available. So there's no direct conversion available. Um, that being said, this, the time it should take to create a Unilogic project uh, should be cut down compared to Visilogic. And usually if it's if something's taking a little bit of time, it might just be a new feature or something that you're not aware of. Um, so when you're going through that conversion process, if you're entertaining that thought, feel free to reach out to us and brainstorm. Uh, say, you know, hey, I'm working with this controller. I'm doing this process. You know, I'm moving to Unilogic. Uh, is there anything that you think I should take advantage of uh, or anything that you think would be a big time saver? With the virtual PLC, what happens if I lose network connection? Am I going to be able to control it somehow? So um, the virtual PLC's screen is just sitting there as a VNC server. Um, you're going to connect to it. To uh, the, the main goal would be to um, control it through the ladder and through the process um, and not necessarily rely on user input, especially if it's related to safety, just for that. Because at the end of the day, there is no physical screen. Uh, so if you're relying on that physical screen, it's probably a good idea to have a uh, you know wired control backup, like a button or something like that. Um, that being said, you're not going you can set it up so that you can't lose network connection um, because you don't have to go over like an office network or something like that um, you can just plug an ethernet cable right to a physical display right to that plc um, and there's really going to be no losing that connection because um, it's right there you're not relying on the network itself is there a script language for the plc so yes i uh i didn't want to dive into it too deep 
Um, but if we go here to our ladder, it is possible to um, add a C function, and it's possible to program using C. That's something we can explore more during the programming section. So can the Unistream communicate as a BACnet slave? So both uh, Unistream and Visilogic um, do not support BACnet natively. We offer the GW-BAC1, and that is a BACnet converter. So we would be talking Modbus to the converter, and then the converter would talk to the rest of the network. Now, I believe that we are exploring uh, the possibility of BACnet being added natively to Unilogic, um, but I'm not exactly sure where that's at, so I don't want to uh, you know, commit to any kind of timeline on that, uh, but just know that it's something that we are exploring. What types of analog inputs are available? Um, so we support zero to 10 volt, uh, zero to 20 milliamp, four to 20 milliamp, thermocouple inputs, um, RTD, like PT100, PT1000 inputs. Um, and again, th that's something that we'll cover a little bit more when we get into the uh, ladder HMI and memory. Um, but just to show you real quick, if we go to our IO here, Go to our. So you can see here the UIA, the A stands for an analog. So if we grab a four analog in and a two analog out, you can see here that we support zero to 20, zero to 10, and you can enable four to 20. And then you set your range for that analog input. Similarly on the outputs, zero to 10, negative 10 to 10, zero to 20 milliamps, four to 20 milliamps. The outputs do support negative 10 to 10. That is something a little unique about them. Regarding the safety rating of the PLCs, uh, if you want to email in that question, I think that'd be the best uh, way to get an answer on that. There are some differences between the web servers supported elements and the HMI supported elements. Um, the exact decision on what is available on which is, you know, I don't have an exact explanation. My guess is it comes down to certain uh, HTML browser capabilities and things like that. Um, so if there isn't something that directly translated, you can certainly reach out to us and we might be able to come up with an alternative uh, or something that would be just as good. What is the maximum temperature on the new PLCs? So why don't we take a quick look at the spec sheet. Good, uh, good chance to show you guys where that's at.
All right. So on our website, if you go to the technical support dropdown, technical library, And if we go to the Unistream hardware, the Unistream PLC, let's say the RA28 specification sheet. And here we can see the environmental ratings. So we have an operational temperature of ne negative 20 degrees C to 55 degrees C and a storage temperature of negative 30 degrees C to 70 degrees C. You can also see that we have things like shock, uh, vibration ratings, uh, altitude, humidity, things like that. So uh, any of those technical specifications can be found through that technical library here. So the web server that I mentioned has um, a tunnel in, it, it is connected to the PLC uh, the same way that the panel is. So it's all one memory base. So if somebody on the web server were to change a set point, if you let them change the set point, if that's an available option, that would be changing on the PLC itself. Um, so yes, you can control the PLC through the web server. Can some other brands of Ethernet I.O. be used with this? Absolutely. So there's no reason that you can't use basically any Ethernet uh, device as long as we're able to talk to it. So again, kind of briefly mentioning the protocols are like the languages that we speak. And if we share a language with that device, it's as simple as plugging it in and just setting it up here. And if we don't speak the same language, uh, it is possible to teach it. Um, you can use Message Composer, and you can basically teach the controller the structure of those incoming messages and the structure of the outgoing messages, and uh, you know talk to that device using that. Using data tables, can you use them to collect data such as gallons of product used slash produced? Absolutely. Um, so data tables are a, again, the easiest way to think about it is like a built-in Excel sheet. Um, but you can, you know, it's rows and columns of data and you can read and write to those data tables. So I don't want to dive into it too much here in the latter, but just to show you in the data table index section, you can see all these tools we have. So writing to a data table, reading from a data table, inserting all that good stuff. So exactly like you're saying, you know, maybe at the end of every day you update the data table or you know, product by product. Every time a product finishes, you, know, you write to that row and you increase the number of production there. And that way you have that backed up. Could I connect your PLC? Could I connect your PLC to EtherCAT devices? So we do not currently support EtherCAT uh, as of yet. Um, so it would not be a natively supported protocol. Is there a way to connect it through the internet without using a DNS uh, DNS resolver, I believe is what you're going for? Um, so the DNS resolver 
allows that remote location that you want to connect to. That remote location could have what's called a dynamic IP address, meaning that every time they like power cycle their Comcast or AT&T, whoever they get their internet from, every time they power cycle the hardware, uh, AT&T or Verizon is going to give them a new, new IP address for their office. Um, and what a DNS resolver does is it resolves that changing IP address to be some fixed thing, you know, mywebsite.com. Um, and if you have a DNS resolver and that changing IP address, you can just always connect to, you know, mywebsite.com to connect to the PLC. You do not need a DNS resolver if you get a static IP address or if you know what the IP address is at the time that you want to connect. So if you pay for a static IP address or you have a business uh, internet account, usually business accounts are static, um, you would just always connect to that same IP address. It's never going to change. No need for a DNS resolver. You just connect to that fixed IP address. Uh, DNS resolver is what lets you use the changing IP address to, to get what you need. What is the simplest and maybe least cost unit to purchase, collect data, and respond with motor or cooler control? Probably the B5 PLC series. Uh, the B5 is going to give you an SD card so that you can still, so that's just the PLC. Um, if we change our current model, we go to PLC, and we go to not pro, but we go to standard. One of these controllers will probably be your best bet. Um, this is going to give you some inputs and outputs to, you know, collect your data and control the system. Um, and you're still going to be able to, uh, you know, save the data, actually actually uh, keep a record of it. Uh, the basic series does not have a SD card. So with the basic, it would be hard to store that to data tables long term. Uh, but with the standard, you, you should be good with that. How do you apply analog in and out? Uh, a moment ago when I brought up the analog, you saw that to and from, or excuse me, from and to value. Um, just to reiterate here, we go to our analog. So right now we're using the raw range of the analog input. So zero is zero milliamps, 8,191 is 20 milliamps. You know, I could do 200 and now at zero to 20, you know, 0, 0.0 milliamps if I wanted to put a decimal place on screen uh, or, you know, 0 0.20.00 uh, milliamps. So you can scale it right here or through the ladder. So motion isn't something that we're going to be covering right now. Um, I guess just a, a quickly show you, um, you know, you can add your, your servo drive from the project here, and you can add your VFD here, and you're going to set up configurations according to that. Uh, given this is an intro, we're not going to dive into that here. When we use web server, we need a VPN. Um, not necessarily. VPN is just kind of a you know, virtual, uh, you know, it's, it's just adding security to the connection between any two devices. So our web server, if you think about bringing up a web browser and connecting to our web server, that's a standard connection. Uh, a VPN is just adding additional security along that path of the connection. Uh, so is it necessary? No. We have communication modules for other PLC brands. Um, we have communication modules to add serial, Ethernet, uh, CAN bus, all different ports. If the other device shares one of those ports, then yes, we would be adding a port to talk to that other brand, but no port that is unique to a particular brand.
what are some limitations of VisiLogic when compared to Unilogic? Same web server functions? Uh, no, the, the Vision series has extremely simple web server capabilities. Um, you're kind of just putting uh, the information there with no, no real user control over how it's laid out unless you're doing the complex web server and writing your own HTML pages uh, separate from the software. So with Unilogic, you can build those screens just like you build your HMI screens. Uh, so much more powerful uh, from the web building side of things. Um, other limitations of VisiLogic memory, um, speed, if you're if you need more speed out of the controller, uh, Unistream is just going to be faster. Um, a big a big portion as well is the interface, um, the reusability. Um, we didn't quite cover it, but you can also make functions that act like function blocks. Like if you think about a simple block, like adding two numbers together, uh, you can make a function that does a much more advanced process and reuse that. So the reusability of the things that you build in Unilogic uh, enables much faster uh, project creation in the project that you're working on and on future projects. Uh, you solve a problem one time or you come up with a you know solution for a unique situation. And anytime that situation comes up in any project, you're gonna be able to you know bring that in and reuse it. Yeah, so finding the IP address to the Unistream, I believe I covered that with the VNC, but just again, really quick to show you because it is important on the physical screen. So you could power up a new uh, you know, PLC out of the box with no, um, with no program on it, never connected to it before. And you're just gonna press and hold that upper right hand corner of the Unistream screen. And it's gonna bring up UniApps. And inside of UniApps, you can change that. I have a little bit of a network issue here myself. But it's that simple. You just hold the upper right hand corner, UniApps, network tab, and then a panel IP address. Can PLCs be networked in master slave or equivalent mode in one application diagram? So um, you will be adding those remote nodes uh, unique. So for example, if you were doing Modbus nodes and we are a master, you know, you're gonna be adding remote slaves to this device. So you do have this top-down view here where if we had multiple slaves, you can see those different slaves and their different configurations here. Uh, question about Ethernet IP. Um, nothing particular unique to do with Ethernet IP. One of the nice things with Ethernet IP, the protocol, is that once you have the information set up correctly, like if we're scanning information from a device, as long as the information is set up correctly, it's just going to be updating at this 16 millisecond interval. So you can almost treat it like, you know, IO tags that are coming right in through your, uh, you know, your IO every 16 milliseconds, that data is gonna be updated from that device that we're talking to. How many VNC clients can I connect to to the virtual HMI at the same time? So we have dozens of sockets available on these controllers. So at a low safe number, at least 20. You could have at least 20 people all connected to the same panel. And you can set, uh, if I quick show you here in the password management section, you'll notice there is a view only and a full access password. So, you know, maybe there's one or two operators who are actually going to be able to control the panel remotely and you could give them that. And, you know, in this case where we have 20 people connected, the other 18 are just, you know, 18 other panels around the facility that are acting as a uh, remote view into that process.
Yes, do PLCs with HMIs also have VNC servers? Uh, PLCs with HMIs, yes, they support VNC server and client capability. Uh, regardless of what Unistream controller you go with, uh, it doesn't matter, we will support VNC client and server capabilities with the exception of the display only. Uh, the display only models that came out with the PLC, those will be VNC client only because they are not running an application themselves. Yes, we will cover UAC uh, much, much more in depth in, in the future webinars. So there is no simulation uh, for the software. Um, we're strong believers in having a physical unit to test with, downloading it. Uh, once you download, you can go online and take a look at that. Uh, if there's a particular thing that you're trying to simulate, like if you don't have the process to work with and you need to simulate something, you could always send in the request and just say, you know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And we might have a creative way just to, you know, simulate that in the software for you, but no simulator tool available. Is there any way Unistream PLC can connect on Modbus with third-party HMI? Absolutely. So, um, you know, Modbus isn't going to be used for sending images or, or sending a copy of their display. Um, but if they talk Modbus, we certainly talk Modbus. So we would be able to, you know, get any values from them and write any values to them, depending on what the nature of that uh, connection is. So if you had a display that supported Modbus and you wanted to mirror that information onto our display, um, you could have our controller reach out to and read that information and then, you know, uh, populate a display with it. Is it possible to connect with other microcontrollers like Arduino or something like that? Uh, again, any any protocol that we share, we will be able to talk to those devices. Um, if we have a physical port that matches up, like an Ethernet port, it, that's as simple as it is for the physical connection. And then what we're doing over that physical connection is the protocol. It's the language we're talking. So as long as we share a language with it, it's going to be super easy. Um, if we don't, you might have some success building yourself. Um, just know that that's going to take a, an intimate understanding of whatever you know custom protocol you're trying to implement. Um, does Visologic, but do the Visologic and Unilogic trainings align? So is there value in going to the Visologic training? I absolutely think there's value in going to the Visologic training. Um, there are some lessons, uh, overall programming lessons, you know, structure, thought process, things like that, that might translate. Uh, but the software environments are very, very different. So if you are working with Visologic, I highly recommend tuning into the Visologic series this Thursday. Uh, and if you're working with Unilogic or if you're interested in Unilogic, I highly recommend, uh, you know, sticking with these as well. I think both of the, the series of videos is going to be very helpful. Uh, what app to use? I assume you are referring to remote connection, and that would be any VNC, virtual network connection, any VNC app. Uh, I happen to use VNC Viewer on my smartphone. It was the first one that came up in my app store, and it works for me. Uh, really, the main difference between the VNC applications is just the interface that you're working with. Um, some of them, you will move a little mouse cursor around the screen and click. Other ones, it will take your you know, finger input on your phone like a touch screen. Um, so it's really your preference and what you like. I think there are even like pro VNC apps that you can pay for that have additional features. I've never messed around with them. Um, but yes, any VNC it is going to work. Uh, we do not support Mac. Uh, this is a PC only. The the SQL connector, the SQL connector, um, that is where we would configure SQL database connections. Um, we're going to get into that and in communication, which is the the last day of the videos. Uh, but basically, SQL is how we connect to an SQL database. So if you think about the data tables inside of the controller, like Excel files in our controller, 
a SQL connector or a SQL database is kind of like a whole server full of Excel files um, where we can update those files or pull from those files. Um, oversimplified explanation, but just to, to give it some, um, some context. Is there some delay on the VNC virtual display versus a real Unistream display? So there's no, um, there's no difference in the interface, it, but with anything networked, anything over any cable, serial, ethernet, there's inherently gonna be some travel time for, for that data. You know, it's very fast, ethernet is very quick. Um, but if you're talking about, you know, connecting to a PLC on the other side of the world, uh, you know, through the internet and it's, it's making a huge path over there, there's inherently gonna be a little more delay on that virtual screen that you're looking at um, than you would with a physical screen that's right there. Um, so it's just the travel time of the information. which LAN is used, which local area network is used. Um, it should be the one associated with your uh, ethernet port. Um, it, it's really gonna it's really gonna determine what you're connecting. Like let's say you're connecting wirelessly to the panel and you're connecting to that Wi-Fi router that's in the panel. You'd want to know what the IP address of your Wi-Fi network is. If you're hardwired into the panel, you'd wanna know what your ethernet ports. IP addresses. So it's all relative to what you're connecting. Is the full module set for zero to 10 volts? Is the is the full module uh, analog input set for zero to ten volts, or is it channel wise that it can be set? It is channel wise, so uh, each analog channel can be set for a different. Uh, you know, one could be voltage, one could be current. It's all what you need. Yes, we do support high speed inputs. That is the THS module. UID O eight O eight THS. And you can see that when we add a THS, and we will cover this more when we get to IO and things like that, but you can see with the THS, um, we now have a THS, and we have some high speed blocks here. So for example, if we're doing a counter, you can see now that in my THS, excuse me, in my THS. You see now that we have an updated block one counter frequency direction, and that B1 refers to block one because that is the only one that we currently have defined here. If I define block two, say as a PWM output, go back to my IO. You can see now I have B2, PWM able frequency duty cycle. Do you need additional power supplies for modules? Uh, yes, so the, the these modules, depending on what the modules are, may require 24 volts. Uh, usually you can jumper it from the PLC as long as your power supply has enough amperage.
with VNC, can I communicate with a Unistream device from outside my network using internet uh, in some other physical place? Absolutely. So if you had your panel on the other side of the world and you knew what the IP address was at that location. Um, so anybody that pays for internet from an internet provider gets an IP address. Um, so let's say that office on the other side of the world is 10.2.2.10. That's not what it would look like, but just for easy numbers, um, you would connect to that IP address and somebody at that location would have set something up called a port forwarding entry to get it to the PLC. It's the one networking step when you're trying to go outside of your network. Um, but yes, you'd be able to view the, bring the screen up on your phone wherever you are in the world as long as you had internet access. Which communications can run simultaneously? Um, all of them, uh, realistically, with the exception of serial. Uh, serial is going to be, you know, channel to channel. A serial port is going to be doing that one thing that you've set that serial port up to do. Uh, Ethernet has dozens of sockets, so you have, you know, 20 plus simultaneous uh, lanes of communication happening over that one ethernet port. Uh, so one ethernet plug into the controller and you could have 20 plus devices talking 20 plus different uh, you know, languages to each other. So a follow up on that remote connectivity question. Um, so connecting to a PLC that's on a different network and that other network doesn't have a fixed IP address. So the big problem there is you just don't, you're not gonna know what the IP address is at that location unless somebody is able to verify that. Um, so if you have somebody on site, you can say, hey, you know, what's your external IP address right now? They can check it and they can tell you what it is and now you'll be able to connect. Um, but following that example through, if over the weekend they you lose power, the router power cycles, they get a new IP address and nobody lets you know, um, you know, they're not gonna be able to see that. Now, there are creative solutions to this. Um, you can, monitor your external IP address from the Unistream and basically say anytime your external IP address changes, send out an email uh, with your new IP address. And then basically anytime you'd wanna connect to that location, you would bring up that email account. You would look to see what the last email you got, what your current IP is, and you could connect to that. Um, you're effectively turning an email address into a DNS resolver. Excuse me a moment, I lost my uh, location in the question list, so I'm just scrolling down to get to where I was.
does the uh, does it support 1.5 and 2.5 millisecond interrupt routines? It does not. Uh, it is much faster than Visilogic, so there are no longer 1.25 and 2.5 millisecond uh, interrupt routines. We do not currently have any IP68 rated controllers. All of our ratings can be found under the certificates page on our website. You go to our website, to technical support, and then certificates. This is where we will find all of our ratings, including our class one div two rated parts. Can we connect a printer to get data every minute? Uh, all, all depends what you're trying to do. Um, if the printer works with print jobs, uh, we are not able to create a print job for the printer. Um, but if the printer supports FTP, which a lot of new modern printers do, um, we are able to FTP files to the printer for them to be printed. So it really comes down to what the printer is and what data you're trying to get. What about the internal time and time update connection to the time server? Yeah, so you can use a time server in the ladder. Um, you can connect to a time server to update the time according to what you're working with. Um, generally, it's not needed. Um, the PLC can have its time set to match the PC um, right when you're downloading. And with that kind of setup, you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna be what your current computer time is. But absolutely, if you have an internet time server that you wanna utilize, uh, you can absolutely do that. Can you run Visilogic and Unilogic on the same computer at the same time? Yes, you can run Visilogic and Unilogic simultaneously. How many bits of resolution are on the analog I.O.? Uh, all depends which analog modules we're talking about. Uh, the specifications for each one are going to be on the website. And also take a look at the module itself, and it's going to default to the maximum. Um, so not that one. That's one that I had changed earlier. So you can see here 0 to 8191. So here is the full range for this analog output. And if you enable 4 to 20 milliamp output, you still get the full range, uh, but between 4 and 20 milliamps. We do have service uh, support in India. Uh, if you take a look to buy and you should be able to find your distributor through this section of the website where to buy and if you're not able to just email support at unitronics.com is it required to purchase an opc ua license um so there's no purchase requirement for working with uh, OPC UA with us. Um, the certificates are generated between the between us and and you know what we're connecting to. Um, so you you shouldn't have to purchase the license.
how can I communicate over USB port panel in Modbus? Um, so we, we'll cover this in communication as well, but just to, just to really quick show you while we're here, um, under your physical connection, you go to your serial com. This is that serial port on the controller, and you would be setting this for Modbus panel, and you have your properties here. And now in our Modbus, when we are defining them, you can see that we have this 485, the serial port that we can now add our slaves or our you know, masters to. You do need to download changes that you make. So online editing is not, a, uh, is not an option. So the virtual PLC, um, or let me take a step back, the PLC without a display has all of the functionality that a, a Unistream PLC with a display has. So the question, is it possible to communicate the virtual PLC to other brands of HMI on Modbus? Um, the PLC supports Modbus just like the paneled versions support Modbus. So we would be able to exchange and share information with those devices. Um, so certainly the virtual PLC, uh, you know, could could uh, you know connect to those other devices over Modbus? You wouldn't be exchanging the actual state of the screen. You would be you know exchanging data points with with that other device. Can we simulate waveforms? Uh, with minimum and maximum set points. So we have trending on the controller. So you would add what is called a data sampler. Getting a little advanced, but we'll we'll be covering this in depth more. You would take the piece of information that you are sampling, the value. And it is going to take what this value is every one second here is my sampling interval. So if I instead made it, you know, every hundred milliseconds, it's going to take this value and you know keep track of it every tenth of a millisecond. And we can graph that using one of our trend. And you're able to link that data sampler. And now you'd have that piece of information trending over time. Do we have any technology to control CNC? Uh, CNC is not currently a targeted uh, application type for us. Um, we could certainly send values to a CNC, recipes, um, and we do motion control. We have access control, um, but we're not targeting the precision that's often required and the synchronization of multiple axes, like the four or five axes of a CNC machine. Uh, no, no current interpolation between the, the axes. Servo drives are um, motion, um, so precise motion. Um, just another another way to control the the motion of a process. Does it have firewalls to prevent cyber attacks? Um, so this is this is an interesting question because I understand where the question's coming from. It's from a security uh, point of view. That being said, this is a proprietary OS. Uh, you know, it's it's our company's operating system running on this. And then there is part of the system that is Linux based. The um, the panel uh, is partially Linux based. That being said, there's no real attack avenues to the controller. Um, you, you know, if they have physical network access, if they are able to see our PLC on the network, you have bigger security concerns at that point. Um, they, they shouldn't, if they're at the point where they're on your network, um, that's really what the firewalls were there from the, from the outside. Um, once you're on the network, you know, we're, we're just gonna be a device there and we're gonna play with the other devices. Um, I have, you know, I've been with the company for over five years now. 
I have never heard of a PLC being, you know, attacked, uh, you know, with a with a cyber attack, something like that. So the Unitronics mobile application also work with Unisphere models? No. Um, so you can use any VNC application. So you do not have to use our application on the uh, on the App Store. You can use any VNC application for Unistream. When we use VNC to connect to the HMI, it's just the same IP. It's the panel IP address, uh, and it'll it'll connect. Uh, linear or circular interpolation. Uh, currently, interpolation is not supported on the VFDs. PID automatic tuning. Uh, pretty advanced question, um, but just to answer it, we do support uh, PID. And what the way that we would do automatic tuning is what's called an auto tune. Uh, basically, where you let the process run in auto tune, and it's going to run at 100% power and at 0% power until it exceeds and then falls below the set point a number of times and learns how the system reacts. And then it is going to give you good starting values for your P, I, and D parameters. Uh, at that point, it should control the system as you need. But it, even if it doesn't do it perfectly, you have a much better starting place to fine tune those parameters from. Can we change the PLC IP address without downloading? Um, you can change the IP address through info mode, hold the upper right hand corner, network tab, and then change the IP address there. Currently, I am not aware of any plans for simulation. Um, but you know, anything is possible. It might it might be coming, uh, but I am not familiar with it. The two IP addresses, panel versus CPU. Um, so this segregates the network communications. So when we talked earlier about adding like a custom protocol using Message Composer, this is something that would be used over the This is something that would be used over the, let's see here, the CPU Ethernet. So Message Composer, um, Ethernet IP, the protocol Ethernet IP, those are both going to be over the CPU Ethernet. Uh, basically, everything else is going to be over the panel Ethernet. Now, there are cases where, um, for example, Modbus is used over the network Ethernet. There are cases where people have wanted Modbus on a separate network than the network they use to download. So the IO and the other devices they're talking to were on a totally different separate network than the network they use to talk to the PLCs. It is possible um, to enable advanced functionality to do Modbus with the CPU Ethernet as well. Um, but to, to give you the simple information you need to know, panel Ethernet is going to be every kind of connection you need realistically, with the exception of Ethernet IP or Message Composer. Those are the two main ones you're going to be using CPU for. Can we create user function blocks in the PLC program? Absolutely. Um, we will be doing that in, in the more programming section of it. Just to show you super fast, if I add a function here, this function you can see down here. Go. Go to our say I'm going to make a function block that adds three numbers together. Go 
go to my add three. And so we're going to take three numbers as function ends. Say an integer, num1. Two, one, three, and say we'll have one output. We have one function out. The result and so now if I were to call this add three function from somewhere else in the ladder you can see that it's asking for my num1, my num2, my num3, and it's going to spit the result out into this sum. So it's going to take whatever we put on our function in parameters, it's going to go into this function, and then we can have a reusable ladder here that uses those function blocks. So again, just completing this out, we say num1 num plus num2 plus num3. And we don't care about sum of two. Once we leave this, we only care about the sum of three. So this one could be local. And if you're confused, please don't worry about this. I'm only doing this because of the uh, the question on this. So we take num1, num2, we store it into sum of two, and then we take sum of two and we add num3. And now we have a sum of three. So this ladder logic, now I could link, you know, I could call this a whole bunch of different times, link different numbers to them, and get different results out of them. So it lets you reuse ladder very effectively. So all of the links associated with these meetings um, are, are going to be sent out, or they should be available through the email you already got. Um, if you're an attendee here, we should have your email and your information, so you should be getting a copy of the links to those other webinars. I, I do not have one of those handy right now. And forgive me, there were there were quite a few questions, and some of the folks had, had left chat and things like that. So. If I missed your question, if there's something critical that I didn't cover, um, please you know, feel free to reiterate it or ask it again here. All right, well, I'm not seeing any more questions come in. Um, if I did happen to miss your question, or if you do come up with any questions after we end the session, please uh, either give us a call, 617-657-6596, or shoot us an email to support at unitronics.com, and we'd be more than happy to help out. Just let us know, uh, and we're here for you. Uh, Daniel uh, Quick asked about the deterministic timing. I mentioned this earlier, uh, much faster than Visilogic, we do not support uh, interrupt routines with Unilogic. So uh, again, guys, thank you so much for coming out. Um, I hope this was helpful for all of you. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, please shoot those questions in to us. Uh, otherwise, hopefully we'll see you on Thursday and again next Tuesday. Uh, and stay safe, please. Everybody, it's crazy times out there, so uh, stay safe and have a great week, everybody.